All right, everyone, welcome back to the Midnight Magic Musings channel. I am still your humble host, Lord Cephas. I'm joined this morning by Lady Cephas, and we are here to discuss the Fear of the Walking Dead series and season finales, both episodes that just aired on AMC. We're going to get right into it. Lady Cephas, how are you? I'm great this morning. How are you? I'm doing good. Let's jump right into it. All right. They aired two episodes. One was Fighting Like Me. The other was, or Fighting Like You, rather. And the other was The Road Ahead. So let's start it out by giving a score. We'll just do a combination. Overall, both episodes, what did you think of the finale as a whole? One out of ten. Nine. All right. I'm going to give it an eight. But we'll explain why. We, we will do that here as we go through. So let's jump right into fighting like you. All right. So it begins with uh, where they left off, where Troy and his daughter are on their way to rendezvous with Russell and the other folks who are hurting walkers, as we've seen many, many times in, across all series. And out of nowhere, they run over a tripwire, if you will, and they get taken out by a big old log swinging into their truck. It reminded me of for me because I'm old return of the Jedi when the Ewoks would cut the logs and come out and smash into it. That's what I thought immediately when I saw it. Um, really cool way. I thought to open up the episode, kind of catch you off guard because lately it felt like there's been more dialogue than anything else. They, they didn't dialogue heavy early. They, they kind of went right forward as if they were like, let's, let's lock this down. Um, yeah. That was, that was a really cool, sh you know, shot um, came right out of nowhere and it, that it was like a little Tonka truck when that big old <laughs> tree hit it and it, it was. went, it was like gone. Well, they come back and uh, Troy is impaled through the, uh, that would be the left shoulder mm -hmm. uh, with a tree branch, big old tree. And his daughter's okay after crashing the truck. Apparently uh, walkers weren't able to get him after several hours, kind of odd, but we go on. She escapes to go find help, leaves him behind. The assumption was, well, he won't make it because of all those walkers around him. But she happens upon a now feuding again, Victor and Madison and Daniel. And uh, I started to say Rosita, but that's that's actually the regular Walking Dead. Uh, Luciana, Luciana, I should say. Mm -hmm. um, felt, felt kind of weird with the whole dynamic, her pulling a gun on people and you know, threatening. It just, it felt kind of, kind of odd. How, how did you feel about her, her attitude in these particular episodes? As far as Madison's attitude. Yeah, I thought she was a little out there. Definitely. I think her obsession to find Alicia really um, overtook her mind. And I don't think mentally, she was able to do anything else. Actually, let, let me uh, reference another show that we watch mm -hmm. um, where I won't say what the show is, but where one of the characters child disappeared mm -hmm. and where that child disappeared. Uh, the mom goes and sits all night watching, looking, waiting for her child to come back. And it's been what 10, 12 years now? In yeah. Storyline? Yes. It, ha it has been a long time. So she was able to function and hold a job, but there's that mental component yeah. that, that drives her. And, you know, I think that's the same thing that happened to Madison. She just became so obsessed with finding Alicia and burying her that it clouded all the other things around her. You, you know, and that's a great point. After eight-ish episodes, mm -hmm. you know, nine, ten episodes of this, I finally get a little bit of what they were trying to go for with that. I just sometimes felt like it went here, there, and everywhere. But it, it kind of came together here. Mm -hmm. um, the young lady comes up on them. Um, she, she needs help. Her father's been hurt. Uh, of course, Madison goes to save him because she's not really trying to save Troy. She wants to kill him and actually threatens to do so right. uh, several times. And then there's some discussion about, you know, the St. Christopher medal and, and that type of stuff. Mm -hmm. And then out of nowhere, there's the return of a villain from the very first part of the season. And 
what sibling would that be that showed up out of nowhere? That would be the brother showed up out of nowhere. Wasn't that the brother that Troy's brother? No, no, no. From Padre. You had the two siblings. Oh yeah. 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 Sorry. No, you're fine. Um, yeah. And I'm like, how in the heck did he survive? Because he was the weak one and all those people followed him. It was like, wow, uh, all of a sudden you have kahunas. Well, it's weird because they followed him like these people followed Troy. And it, we never really got much backstory and there wasn't a lot of time for it. But it's like weak-minded people will follow the stronger of the weak-minded people. and That's true. And so I didn't really see that coming back. Um, so he basically wanted Padre as well. Um, as Totally different reasons because he just wanted it back because she took it from him, killed his right. sister, all that good stuff. Right. Um, so now all of a sudden, Troy and Madison – are zip tied together. Yeah. And, and this is where I have my first issue. Okay. So they zip tied him on the side on Troy's side where he had the, the stick through him. Yes. So truthfully, he should have not been able to move that arm at all. And here that arm is what is handcuffed to Madison. He should have been in excruciating pain. You know, he should have been passing out all of that from the pain of, you know, being jostled around. Um, but apparently they have some pretty good drugs in the apocalypse because he wasn't. A man with a haircut and the hair that he has, which is awesome. It, we're just tougher. We're just tougher. This month. That what it That's is? what it is. You just have to accept that. Well, they do manage to escape. Um. And, and then end up trying to pull an Indiana Jones in the Temple of Doom. Oh, that was awesome. Cross the rickety bridge. Mm -hmm. And I'm sitting there going, this is exactly what, and it was, by the way. And they get about halfway across and the guy's chasing him with his hatchet. And he hatchets the uh, the rope. And, of course, they fall into the water. They're submerged in the mud um, with walkers in the water, in the mud. He basically is going to leave them there to to die one way or the other either walkers get them or they get submerged in the mud and they can't get out because they're still zipped right. together and wouldn't you know it right on cue here come more walkers oh of course and they attack him and they they overcome him shall we say it was an early morning brunch for the for the for the dead but in the middle of all that troy and madison are sinking 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 and glub glub under the water they go fade to black right Thought it was really good the way they did that. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, they come to. Madison's got water in her lungs, obviously. But she was rescued and, and she was saved, as was he, obviously. And then there's more of the mental manipulation. Because, see, the question all along has been, who's the little girl? You know, what about her mama? Serena, as we found out her name was. Troy saved Madison. Troy, yeah, that's a great point. Let me jump back to that. He saved her originally in the uh the stadium when she had had said it you know she was leading the walkers away no that wasn't um troy that was the uh the padre people. oh that's right it was the padre people because they heard heard her thing that's yeah. right that's right so so explain to me how troy saved madison um when they're they're handcuffed together yes and he has this incredible wound through and through on his shoulder and he was able to get them out so the damaged eye allowed him to breathe through it oh is that it's like it a gill oh, okay I'm just, you know for for someone who's worked in the medical field for so many years i just thought you, everybody would have known that i know it i can't explain everything but but it then goes into a little bit of well who is this little girl well uh, Serena is the mother's name mm -hmm. that passed away, but she was a disciple, I guess, an acolyte of Alicia because she, she liked to talk about, we need to help people. And yes. That was kind of the underlying theme of this whole episode. Well, the whole reason she's dead is because she tried to emulate Alicia. Remember we had the walking Alicia's. We had like five of them. Right. With uh, long hoods and swords, which, yes. you know, we'll, we can talk about that at the very end. Um, but basically the idea is, look, there's a horde coming to Padre. We can either work together. Mm-hmm. Or we can just let Padre fall. And they decide, okay, Troy's like, you know what? I've seen the light. 
the water changed me. I'm a changed man. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll, I'll call off the horde. And he does have the conversation. He asks where they are. Right. Because shortly thereafter, they show up with MRAP. Right. And he says, get down and get down. They do. And they wiped out maybe 30 of them, but that didn't really touch the, the number. Board, yeah. yeah. There were still so many of them. But it gave him the opportunity to have the others come in and redirect the, the, the horde. That's exactly right. Or, or so we thought at least we thought we, that that was going to work. And it was a smart idea, mm -hmm. but ultimately as the episode plays out, there's still a horde, a coming as it were. Well, yeah, but um, we find out, you know, none of none of uh, Troy's people got killed. They just went and rounded up the horde again and, and followed through with the original plan. Yeah, I mean, that's 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 commitment. I'll, I'll give him that. Well, he, he made a promise to Troy. Yeah, you know, it's interesting how it, only in the zombie apocalypse are promises held up to be this most holy thing. <laughs> Any other time in the world, nobody cares. But all of a sudden, in the post-apocalyptic world, a promise is like this major sacred thing that mm -hmm. I just I find that 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 interesting. Well, you know, I mean, it's kind of like it's just how it is now. I mean, we're not in the apocalypse, but you know, we have these leaders that come into power and then they are deranged somewhat, maybe not all the way. Yeah. But they have such faithful followers that would do anything for them. Mm, good point. Well, you know what? I guess it's just a natural outflow of the humanity you were talking about with the whole weak-minded people. Right. They gravitate towards it. They, they do. will follow it. And so the group rounds them up again. Mm -hmm. And we thought all, all was saved. All was good. Troy's uh, talking to Madison in the first episode. Uh, he's a changed man. Puts his hand on her shoulder. Asking her to believe him. Now, right before that, she sends the little girl away to go help them pack to get ready. Yep, Tracy. Tracy. And you had to feel like that's a setup. Either she was going to say something she didn't want her to hear or something was going to go down. Actually, I, I did not. I, I thought she was going to give him the whole speech of, you know, this is what Alicia would do. She would give you a second chance. Blah, blah, blah. That's what I thought. Um, I should do, or, you know, mm -hmm. that's what I thought she was going to do. Um, so I was caught off guard when she stabbed him. I don't think it was that she, you know, she was wrong for doing it. Sure. However, you know, the little girl saw shouldn't have that, you know, does not ingratiate her to the little girl. Why should the little girl trust her? Yeah. You know, after that, and, just hearing you say that makes me think this season has been very hard on little kids. Kind of. Yeah. Uh, you had Finch who was bitten and passed away uh, at the hands of the Padre leadership. Um, you had uh, Tracy who's seen all this stuff growing up and all of this stuff. Mm -hmm. You had Mo who went yeah. through all of this stuff who I'm not quite convinced is mentally stable either. Lost her mom, went off with her dad to find Rick, I guess, back in, uh, back in the Hilltop, uh, Kingdom, Alexandria, Triumvirate, which they don't even know is not really even there. Um, so it, it's been, looking back, that's kind of weird the way they did that. Very uh, young adult centric in right. how, they, how they wrote this. But she sees it. She falls apart as would be expected. And it, what's funny is even Madison's crew was like, what are you doing? Right. And, you know, we used to make fun about Morgan and Friends about, you know, oh, everybody deserves a second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth chance. Right. But when everybody else is like, what are you doing? That ought to tell you. When Victor's like, what are you doing? That'll yeah. tell you something. Victor he, of all people. Yeah. Daniel didn't trust him. But Daniel didn't want him dead there either because there was, you know, you want to get, use him to get what you need. And so. Exactly. Very, very interesting. I, I really liked the way that particular episode ended. I thought that was a really good hook for what was to come next. And so. I thought that episode was pretty good. There were a few things that kind of make me kind of make me cringe, to be honest with you. Um, th the kid thing really does jump out at me. You know, they they zip tied her in the MRAP when she went to look for her dad, right? She's yeah, watching Madison all the video did. and she's watching all the tapes that Al yeah. had done. Um, Do you think that is what in the second um, half kind of gives her? The ability to forgive. 
I thought they, that's what they were doing. I really okay. did. And they never really played it up, but I really thought that was the purpose of yeah. that. Otherwise, it just became babysitting until, you know, Strand and the crew could get there to, to find her in the MRAP because right. uh, Madison had, had told them where to find her. Yes. All right. Well, that basically ends that very first part. Right. The, the first of the two parts. And I, and I would like to say just my opinion. Yes. I, I was not really excited about that episode. Mm. I, I kind of felt like it went along with all the other episodes. Mm hmm. And uh, kind of left me feeling not fulfilled, not satisfied. There were there were parts of it that I really liked. The opening five minutes I really liked. And honestly, the last two to three minutes, the dialogue between Madison and Troy, I liked that. Definitely that was good. The, the um, in the middle was kind of up and down for me, like, you know, Daniel... Salazar's mm -hmm. back and forth with everybody. Um, well, it, I, go ahead. no, I, I, um, I kind of feel like, you know, when, when Troy told her that, you know, that was Alicia's daughter as he's dying, I kind of, I kind of felt, um, let down like you know it's just, it's just another lie you know something else to um crank up her mental health issues did you feel that in that moment i did really because i was over going oh my goodness how could how, why would she have a child with him then i'm trying to do the math in my head that's like 10 years ago that's about yeah. her age i'm like well that does so see i'm over here playing mental gymnastics but you got it right yeah. away i didn't and that is he's just messing with her because he knows, and they explain this in the next episode. Yeah. If she thanks the little girl as her granddaughter, mm -hmm. she'll fight like heck for it for the child. Right. And I, I didn't, I didn't perceive that at that time. So yeah. you, you definitely one up me on that one. But it, it does make sense in the whole idea of Troy was just as twisted, and and I could make this argument just as twisted as Madison is. Yeah. Absolutely. It, it's a different manifestation, but it's the same twistedness. It is, it's, and it's again, he was a leader. Mm -hmm. You know, over his group, they followed him and, you know, he had had that dynamic that those people wanted to follow him, but he wasn't mentally stable. Look, I think to bolster your point, the, the last episode, so that would be episode 10. Do you remember the firefight they got in? Yes. With, at the uh, the deep, the fuel depot. Mm -hmm. They even made the statement. They didn't care if they lived or died. Right. And they took out a whole bunch of the quote unquote good guys. If there is such a thing in this right. series anymore, there weren't that many of them left, but yeah. these folks just didn't care. Right. They, they were, they, they had, they had drank the Kool-Aid, so to speak. They were oh, all yeah. in. Absolutely. Well, you know, if you think about it, you know, looking at, you know, the walking dead, you know, um, the, the saviors, mm -hmm. same way. Uh, you know, same devotion. Um, you remember the, I uh, can't think of her name right now, the girl, uh, her and Daryl were together, I guess. Um, and then she left and joined that group. Oh, Leah. Leah. Yeah. Yeah. The one that, so, the one that Maggie murdered. Yes. Deservedly so. Stop um, it. But, you know, the, again, they weren't meant, you know, their leader definitely was not mentally stable and they followed him and listened to him and did what he said, you know, um, or paid the consequence. And Are you not ashamed? Are you not ashamed? I will never let that go. That was, that was probably the best thing that whole episode arc did for me was give me that, that quote. I'm sure. I'm sure. But you're right. It, it does seem like in the apocalypse, the, the people that had the ability to snap and mm -hmm. tap into that have been the ones who have sort of formed their own groups, had leadership roles right. and caused some of the most damage. But, you know, I guess that makes a lot of sense because in humanity, when everything goes into chaos, yeah. someone's got to fill the vacuum of the power void. And yeah. that's, that's what these folks are doing. And, you know, and deser deservedly. So the, um, they should be followed, I guess, you know, because there are people out there that, don't are not capable mm -hmm. of leading right of taking on and in such an environment that's huge you know 
but well, I, I mean, digress. everybody's lost everything. So mm-hmm. what do you have to grab onto? Cause we all need right. something Absolutely. to hold on to. Mm-hmm. And, um, I, I was playing uh, CM Punk's theme music made cult of personality as you were talking there, because it really is that personality draws people. Yes. Um, so I like the way it ended. I like the way it started. I got lost somewhere in the middle. I was sort of, eh, yeah. about it, which is really why my overall score was an eight rather than higher. Cause I felt like that, that episode was a little less right than what I wanted, but I was willing to stick out, stick it out for the next one because we did have breakfast between the two episodes. So I could have a moment to, you know, get my bearings and get a little food in my tummy. And by the way, bacon and eggs with mushrooms and uh, peppers. And it was a great way to get ready for episode number two. And so episode two is the long road. Okay. So you spoke about why you gave it an eight. Yes. And honestly, I was thinking an eight, mm-hmm. but I absolutely loved the last episode there's nothing in that episode I could critique negative, negative. I can't even say the word. She can't even speak the words because it's not there. Right. I, I, there's, there was nothing negative about that episode in my mind. I, at, at, um, a little jaded going in and then we got the payoff. And that and we'll, just and, that just made it for me. And we'll get there. We'll get there pretty quick. Yeah. Um, so the episode opens up. Um, Troy is dead. There's the fallout. Everybody's mad at everybody. Mm-hmm. There was some good dialogue in the first five, eight minutes of the episode, including Daniel saying he regrets the fact that this is a deep call, letting Madison's husband yeah. Into the barber shop so many years ago in yes. Los Angeles when everything was falling apart. I really liked that line because it finally brought it full circle. First episode to last episode. Absolutely. And I'm like, okay, we're, we're going somewhere here. Well, I loved, absolutely loved that. And I loved how it kind of went around full circle and, you know, strand saying that he regretted letting them on the boat yes yes i'm like wow this is so awesome you know what speak your mind hit them where it hurts and that's exactly what they did well i kind of feel like daniel's just been treated where like he can say whatever he wants and Mm -hmm. no one ever verbally challenges him because ruben blades who is the actor who does that by the way a wonderful musician too by the way if you've ever heard his music but he gets these really great lines and they finally gave Victor as a character, the opportunity to talk back in a meaningful way. Cause too many times he just throws back with, Oh, you just don't know who I am, but he finally got some meat yes, he did. to chew on and forgive the, the terminology, but spit back in his face and yes. he nailed him with it. Yep. And you know, he even said, uh, we're not that different. No. Nope. And I think, that is the biggest truth about those two characters in the yeah. entire series. Yeah. They will both do what they need to do, except one considers himself very moral and righteous and he has a code. Yeah. Uh, Victor does not in, say he has any of that. He has his own internal code, I guess, of survival. Right. But it's the same thing. It's just expressed two different ways. And I thought there's that look for a moment on Daniel's character's face like, Oh, dang. Yeah. He just verbally slapped me in the face, but I can't sell it and admit it because then he'll know he got one. And so they they, they cut away from it. Mm -hmm. But I'm like, that was good. That's been needing to happen for about six seasons. Yes, it has. And it finally, the expression was there, which we'll come back to those two at the end because they finally wrapped that up, I think, in a positive way. Yes, definitely. Um, But Madison decides she's going to take the little girl and go find Alicia in Fort Worth. We don't know she in Fort Worth. Is she running around the TCU campus? Is she a Horned Frog fan now? We don't know, but they're going to Fort Worth. She gets in the car. She's having this long conversation with, with the little girl, Tracy. Uh, tells her, you know, she doesn't believe anything anymore. And basically she said everything your mama died for was stupid. I mean, if you extract from what she was saying, that's what she was saying. Pretty much. And little girl's like, you really believe that? Yes, then you'll understand why. And she takes the gun off the dash, which what idiot sets a gun on a dashboard in front of another human you don't trust fully 
and she shoots her. And even Lady Cephas, I'm gonna rat, I'm gonna rat you out on this. You openly and loudly gasped when she got shot. Did I you did. not? Ish? I did because I thought, <laughs> wow, they're they're going ahead and taking Madison out permanently. I'm like, I was stunned. I thought they were going to do the callback to Nick being shot by Charlie, being shot by a younger kid. I thought for a minute that like, you know, you could do that and it could make some sense. I mean, she was main, way meaner than he ever was to Charlie. Although it, we can, we, we can just leave that one alone, but I th really thought that's what they were teasing. They were kind of replaying that idea of a child. Yeah. Shoots, shoots a main character. Um, She's out. We presume she's going to fade off into obscurity. Um, and then all of a sudden, uh, Tracy goes away. But but who does she run into? In the log? Well, she, she she's in the log. She's hiding. They can't find her. She gets out of it. She's looking for someone. Who does she run into in the woods? He's He's changed. He's kind of gone. Her daddy. He's gone ashen face now. Yeah. Troy. She comes across her dad. Which, you know, I think that had to be for, for story purposes. I think that was that was a good I think that's the way it should have ended him. Mm -hmm. Is by letting her do it. Yeah. They went a long way to get to that point, but mm -hmm. it, it it did close it up, I think, in a satisfying yeah. way. She's hanging out in the woods. Um in, in the middle of the night, mm -hmm. right? And uh, Victor comes across her, finds her, says she's safe with him and all that stuff. Now, whether that's true or not. Well, he 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 rescued her from being attacked. He did. He, well, yes, he did. But you know what? He has no trust equity built up with her either. Well, I mean, yeah, neither did Madison. You know, you talked about that. And, you know, just because somebody's blood doesn't mean that you that you just you know go in with complete trust and i kind of feel like you know that's what madison wanted to do with tracy and it doesn't make a lot of sense and well i think there are i think it, adults are more like that um not children because adults you know they have so many mistakes in their past and so many things that they've learned and whatnot and you know I can see, you know, Ma Madison thinking, okay, this is possibly, or this is my grandchild. Right. This is Alicia's daughter. Um, so that made her more inclined to want to be Tracy's savior. And, hey, let's go together and go, you know, put your mom at rest or, or whatever. I, I know what you're saying, but I'm still like, but it doesn't make sense. She would have a child with Troy. It just it did never not. made any sense to me that she would just jump right into being grandma. It just that. The, but Troy did say he wasn't the father. He did. But I mean, all that stuff. And you're still going to throw yourself after this child that you may or may not have any attachment to it. Just, right. I could see. Um okay, I'll take care of you because you might be my, might be family, but you know, it take care of that child the same way you would any other child. Um, but to, to buy in wholeheartedly that this is, you know, my grandchild, I'm not really sure that she did that. And the only reason why I say that is because of what she later does in the episode when come to find out uh she wasn't really shot well she was shot i mean shot but it not it did not enter her body it it did not for one specific one special specific reason yeah um it was just weird to me i could have seen them go with you know what kid your dad's dead i'm gonna keep you alive just because that's the right thing to do because i killed your dad I'll make sure you're safe until you get old and take care of yourself. That would have made a little more sense to me. Right. Than the attempted drama of is she or is she not a granddaughter? I feel like that was, that one was tough to follow in parts, but they got there. We move on. Victor comes across her in the woods. 
there be a problem back at Padre. Now, Padre's got thick walls, right? Yeah, they said they were 10 foot. Or it was like two feet thick or something like yeah. that, right? So there's no issue. There's no problem. Except. There up, was a problem. <laughs> up, up to the island comes a cargo ship, a freighter, a hauler, with a bunch of walkers just waiting to get off on their private island excursion. In this case, Padre. Yep. And they lower the thing. Immediately, the walkers start falling in the water. And the water must only been about chest high where they shot it. Yeah. Because they're all standing up walking. Now, here's my thing. They can barely walk sometimes on dry land. How they were hoofing it that well in the water, I don't know. It's probably cold. They probably want to get out of the water as quick as it could. Anyway, they impact the island. Padre cannot hold out. Mm -hmm. um, they're in serious trouble. Um, you know, they, they're not going to make it. They call out for help. Um, Luciana and them can't get there in time. Victor's screaming, we can't let it in this way. And then it goes to black. Yeah. And, and, and then, go ahead. And, you know, I, I thought that, okay, that's how they're going to end it, is with everybody dying. And by all rights, I, that wouldn't have upset me. That would have been an interesting way. That would have been more realistic, you know, um, in my opinion. Right. But I do like what they did. I like using that Russell fella as the body shield. Yes. When they were trying to push back the walkers. Yes. I'm like, you know what? He had it coming. He did. Although, if you watch that really old movie, Unforgiven, remember the one with uh, Clint Eastwood when he was in a Western years and years ago, one like an Academy Award was him and Gene Hackman mm -hmm. and Morgan Freeman. There's a line in there. They had it coming, right? And the answer is, we all got it coming, kid. Well, he had it coming. He did. And uh, they used him as a shield. But it only bought him a little bit of time because they get down to the dock. The dock is not defensible. No. So you're not really sure what's going to happen. No one really knows where things are. Um, but then again, we, we don't do it. We do a little bit of a time skip. They didn't say how long it was, mm -hmm. but it does kind of jump a little bit. It does a little bit. And, mm -hmm. and we and we find out what happened back at Padre. So apparently Padre was overrun. It was. But many of the people did survive because of one heroic act. Dare I say one heroic woman by the name of Madison Clark. So, so let's back up just a touch. Okay. So what did you think about her when Victor was begging her to come and help? Um, what did you think of her, you know, saying no? I think where they had written her as a character, that was the answer she should have given, honestly. Because yeah. if you're going to write her as if she's that far gone, that mm -hmm. should have been her answer. Well, you know, interestingly enough, Victor and and uh, the the Alicias mm -hmm. did not make it to Padre. They, no. no. Well, they they, not they, the, they got there, but they, there wasn't enough. Yeah. To, there. So, so, yeah. So, in comes... Madison. Mm -hmm. Madison changed her mind yep. when she regained consciousness. And it, it goes back to the very first few episodes these showrunners did. Yes. When she led them out of the stadium. Yes. Well, into the stadium. Into the stadium, into the stadium I should right. say. Yes. She pulled the same number, basically. She did, and it was fantastic. And and, and that was a great callback. That to, was. To, to that season, season four. And uh, she lit him up, which we all love to see a burning walker. That's always fun on always. this show. And that 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 was pretty good. In, in season eight, and they said this in one of the insider behind the scene things, they mm -hmm. just like to blow things up now. Right. And I'm kind of glad they do. It, it, it helps a little bit. Sure. But she sacrifices herself. Again. Vic, Victor lets uh, Tracy know that she's, you know, she didn't make it. She sacrificed herself. And then we go dark again. And then all of a sudden we come to this tent on the well, side of the well, beach. Well, before, before we went there, so Victor went into great detail in talking to Tracy and explaining to her that, you know, in the end, Madison, you know, did the right thing, that she really is a good person, that she um, did deserve second chance or whatever, third chance, whatever it was. And that, you know, he went into detail 
uh, you know, explaining how it all went down and you have the flashbacks. And I thought it was really good until Tracy pulled a gun on him. You know, for time saving purposes in the story, it did work. Actually, oh, it totally pretty did. Well versus having to slog through 20 minutes of that. Yeah. Um, so I, I was like, hey, that's creative. You gave exposition, a few mm -hmm. a few clips, let everybody else's mind take it from there. I like that kind of story. Yeah, and I was I was really surprised when um, when she left. I just thought she would just leave and right. you know go on her own. And then when it showed her with all the rubble, I, I wasn't sure where she was at first. And um, so so then we come to the tent. We come to the tent. Um, I kind of had an idea what it might be, at least part of it, not the whole thing. But there's a tent facing the shoreline, mm -hmm. the beach. And lo and behold, there's a blonde lady laying yep. on a cot yep. inside the tent. Yep. It's Madison Clark. And there sits the little girl. There sits Tracy kind of mm -hmm. watching over her waiting for her to come out of, I wouldn't say a coma, but from her injuries and whatnot. Right. Well, I think she was, she, obviously she was, you know, watching to make sure she didn't die and turn. Right. Because um, at one point she thought that was what was happening with to the, Madison. And you know what? I, I considered that for a second with the with the wheezing and the gasping. Yeah. I thought we were going to have a John Dory moment when she right, opened her eyes. Right. We didn't, but I, I considered it for a minute. But I thought that was pretty cool. I mean, I thought you know, at first that, okay, Tracy's going to get her revenge and that's why she has her there. Mm -hmm. I, that's a good point. Um, but they have a bit of a, a discussion about, you, know, the, you yeah. know, she took what half a day to dig her out of the rubble. I'm like, wow, you put in a whole lot more effort than everybody else did. Right. Uh, and maybe that's why Madison at the end doesn't go saying hi to everybody like y'all left me behind. But anyway, I digress. They're having a conversation and she hears someone coming at a distance. Tracy grabs the gun, steps out the door, points it and aims it, and you hear a voice. And yeah, and and Madison was worried, and Tracy's like, I've got this. Right. Like, don't you worry, I've got this. That's right. Little Judith. Yeah. Saying shame. That's what, you know, that's what I thought. I thought about it. I'm like, okay, she's the Judith of this of this episode. Well, if you think about it, you know, Shane was Judith's dad. Well, and so, so you, you know, say that's what that's what I have heard. OK, yeah. um, and then you have you have Troy being Tracy's dad. They're kind of similarly minded in a lot of ways. So, I mean, it could, you know, she could be that next uh, zombie killer. Could be. But you hear a voice off screen. Yeah. And I was sitting in the chair. You're sitting on the love seat. And I watched you sit up when you heard the voice. Yes. Because we both knew who it was. And it was Alicia Debney Coleman. Hallelujah. Oh, actually, it's Alicia Debney Clark. I'm sorry. Uh, making her return to the series and you know we talked about this forever would we they did. do it because would they do it walking dead didn't do it because they planned on having rick and michonne series and so they did it with this one they um they bring back alicia clark one final time and by the way first thing i did i looked at her left hand yeah because if it was a human hand i knew it was a dream sequence oh. and, I, and i was not going to invest very much into it uh, but I saw it had the crinkly yes. fingers to it. I'm mm -hmm. like, okay, it, there is a reasonable chance it's her because it's not the one they took off of her. Right. It's a different one. It is a different one. And sure enough, it was her in the flesh. She had heard a story about a woman named Madison. Yeah. Who had done exactly the same thing that had been done at the stadium all those years ago. Mm -hmm. Same move. And so she wanted to come bury her mother. And it was a pretty good reunion. It was, you know, that that's why I give this episode, you know, a, a 10 plus. I was so happy for the payoff. Mm -hmm. um, and it was very well done. It was very well done. Well, if you think about the way it was setting up, she was going to go on a road, a road trip to Texas to find her. Yeah. I don't think you could have told a story that had very much emotion to it. Right. Unless you just find her on the side of the road walking, which would be just a right. complete, that'd be just complete letdown. Um, I thought this is about as good as you can do. And it was good to see them together on screen one final time. It really was. It actually looked like they were happy to be around one another and, and see each other 
as yeah. far as you know, as the actors or actresses, one more time. Well, so I that think was... it, I think it really settled them both. You know, and one of the things that you know, I always had an issue with Madison when um, uh, the brother was alive, Nick. Nick, um, which I loved his character, by the way. Mm -hmm. um, but Madison, you know, she was hell bent keep him off drugs and alive right and to to the point of neglecting alicia and um you know i kind of feel like the way they ended it up um or ended the the series in the the reunion was madison was finally able to put nick to rest and was at peace with, you know, just wanting to be with Alicia. Right. Well, it needed to happen if you were going to give the fans a proper send off. Yeah. And um, they did that. They and did. I, I think in spades. I, I think if you were going to end the series any way, that is the way to have done it. I have to agree. Congratulations, Fear the Walking Dead. You guys, you you did it. You, in my opinion, you did a great job finishing it off. And to see everybody there at the crossroads, everybody just going to go their separate ways, I was very surprised that... Um, uh, they were all going to split up. Right. But I thought it was very interesting, you know, north, south, east, and west. Mm -hmm. You know, who was going to go where and do what. And, um, you know, for Daniel and, uh, Ro what's her name? Not Rosita. I Luciana. Luciana. I know. I can't help it. Um, you know, they were going to go and um, Dwight and Sherry. I, that that one shocked me to go back to the savior, Sanc to the, the sanctuary. sanctuary. Yeah. yeah. Um, where the safe, you know, and she didn't want to, but he convinced her. I really would have liked to have seen, you know, her say her, tell him she was pregnant again. That was, that was just for me because, you know, they, they finally had had a child that of all people that, you know, Madison included, Madison and Alicia searching and looking for, you know, the ones that they love or, mm -hmm. or whatever, Sherry and Dwight were the greatest love story. They were the greatest love of all time. You look at Dwight and what he went through with Negan. And then, you know, at, at Alexandria with, with Daryl and, like and Daryl double crossing him. Well, uh, you know, and then him following the clues, you know, he was bound and determined. He could have given up at any time and all the years of searching for her. And right. he finally found her. And then they finally get their miracle, which is Finch. And um, then to have that miracle taken from them, but they they lasted through that grief and through that trauma and are still together. And then to go back, to even consider going back to where it all started and, you know, go back with the, the intention of making what was bad good. I don't think they got enough recognition for that mm -hmm. but that ha having her you know say you know be pregnant i think would have just been the cherry on top but i digress it's you know they, they didn't get a lot there at the they end didn't. They, but, you know, I guess, they did but probably they were running low on time sure um but i did like they did it at a crossroads because yeah. that that was like poetic Yes. And very smart. You know, if you were, if you'd been following the series, you knew what they were getting at. Right. So they're going back to sanctuary that puts them in walking dead territory. So maybe you never know. They may do a tales of the walking dead 
where they do go back to the sanctuary. Uh, and that could be. I, I kind of got that feeling from the way they were splitting everybody off. That there's possibilities. Right. Of bringing some of that back at, at a later time. Um, June's going back to the cabin where yeah. John Dory is buried. And I think, I think that, you know, that's perfect. Yeah. I, I felt like she got lost a lot. She did. Because she's, I think Jen Elfman's a wonderful actress, but Absolutely. she, she got just kind of put on the shelf sometimes. Mm -hmm. And then when she did get to do stuff, it's kind of like, I don't understand her motivation for why she's saying or, or doing or acting how she is. But I thought she was really good on the show. And I did too. She's taking Odessa with her yes. on a long trip. Um, you have a uh, Coleman Domingo who did a mm -hmm. wonderful job with Victor Strand. I think this last half of the season. Oh, absolutely. I would say Sands season one and probably season two when they were in Mexico. Mm -hmm. Those are probably his best seasons of work that he was given something to work with. And I thought he did an excellent job. He gets a family finally. Which, right, right. Which is what he wanted. Kind of his payoff. Yeah. You know, um, I think some of his other best work was the tower. Well, yes. I mean, hey, was he a good person? No. Hey, Will, but... you know what asphalt tastes like? What? Here. <laughs> oh, well, I mean, just again, you know, that whole dictatorship. It's so good. You know, put it, putting somebody in, in a leadership role and then they kind of lose their mind, you know, because they get all, they get all this power and it's overwhelming. And, you know, so you gotta, you know, you gotta be brought back down to earth. My hope is they'll settle in Commonwealth. And he can run for governor and mm. become governor of Commonwealth. That'd be fantastic. Yeah. Oh my goodness. He would be the most fashionable governor. Yeah. And I would, I'd be there for it all day long. Right. right. Um, we did have one other return. We, we cannot leave before we mention it. A feline return. Skidmark. Skidmark is back, baby. Yeah. That was, that was sweet. That was perfect. And I, you know, and I wondered, okay, are they going to come out? And, you know, is Daniel going to get to see them? Um, are the others going to get to see them? But they didn't. I actually think that was the right move. I do too, 100%. Two reasons. One time mm -hmm. for the episode runtime. But number two, it's a lot of water under the bridge now. Yeah. And now you bring Alicia back and everybody's going to be like, now we're not sure how to feel. We're all conflicted. Right. Yes. I don't think they needed any more no. affliction or confliction. Exactly. It was just time for everybody to go their ways. But I did, yeah. li I did like that Daniel got skid marked back and he was so happy. He was so that. happy. And um, the other part would be them standing in the side mirror view. Of yeah. Victor. He did. I think he's get the one. Yeah. Well, he, his character needed that above all else. I think so. And I think, I think that, you know, that's only right because mm -hmm. he had, you know, a, a relationship with Madison. He had a relationship with Alicia, yes. a close relationship. So I thought that was perfect that he would be the one to see them. I would love to have seen him have a scene with Alicia, but I realized thematically it would have messed everything up with what yeah, they were doing. Yeah, because it would have put doubts, you know, well, yeah. maybe we need to stay together, da da da. Exactly. Yeah. But but I thought that was if you're gonna go that route, that was a really good way of doing it. It was. And really with that, they decide. Now, if you remember from season one of Fear, do you remember where, where Madison's from? Yeah, Los Angeles. No, no, where is she originally oh. from? Oh, but that's a tough one. I caught you off guard. I, you did. Wasn't it the South? It is somewhere? the South. Yes. Is it Louisiana? Close. Right next to it. Montgomery, Alabama. Alabama. And I thought maybe they'll go back to Alabama. And then you have all of our characters in the Southern regions or the in the Mid-Atlantic regions. But right. Nope. They decided they're going back to Los Angeles. But, you know, they explained why she would have she wouldn't have gone back there. Because when she was because talking Broken to Ansible Tracy. Lives there. Oh, oh, sorry. It should be, but no, it's not. Okay. All right, all right, no, right. I'm just kidding. We love you, Brooklyn. Um, We do. No, because, you know, Madison explained yeah. about her father. She did. And, you know, you could, if we had more seasons, you could probably flesh, flesh it out. That. But it, I, I don't know that I would be interested in that. I, I kind of feel like her brokenness quotient had reached its limit. And yeah. you don't need any more no. than what you had. But no. they all three decided they're going back to Los Angeles. In yeah. other words, for them, where it all started, which weirdly enough, same thing they did with Morgan's character. He went back, sort of. He didn't go to Atlanta, although he was in Atlanta, to say hi to his wife briefly. 
and to get rid of his uh, his his current, so he could go you know live another life. Right. But yeah, he was going back to pretty much where it all started for him in that journey, and so they're doing the same thing. So overall, I'm going to give it an eight because I really felt like the episode before it was just really really tough in the middle. I thought the last episode, episode uh, 12, was really good, though. I enjoyed it. I was so glad to see Alicia come back. That, we talked about it for the Walking Dead review. We wanted it. We didn't get it. Of course, they had another plan for it. I'm glad they did it, and I'm glad the secret stayed there. Me too. I really am, because everything gets spoiled now. It does. That's why we put this up at 11.20 Eastern Time. That's when the series will have aired on AMC. So everyone will have a free shot at seeing it before they could be spoiled by it. You know, I think as a series overall, for me, um, I did enjoy mm -hmm. the series. There were some, some times where I was just like, okay, you're, this is just painful. Um, but, you know, I'm really thankful to the series creator, the writers, the actors, especially, you know, the, the actors that... Um, we're in this very last episode. They did a phenomenal job. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, I'm sorry to see it in. I think it could, you know, go further in different directions. Um, but at the same time, I got the ending that I wanted. They, and, and that I, was the question. Could they give us yeah. an ending we wanted? And, I, and they did. They did. Um, so a couple of things, uh, mm -hmm. just as we're wrapping up here, sort of an in memoriam. I don't know if you noticed when the title card came up for this episode. Mm -hmm. Did you look at the profiles in it of the different silhouettes that they do no. at the beginning? You had the silhouettes from like season seven. You had uh, Wendell in the wheelchair. Oh. It, it showed the silhouette of all oh, of the people. everybody that they didn't. Correct. They had everybody in that shot or the silhouette of them. Yeah. And I kind of hoped for a second they would give us a little something. They yeah. didn't. And I understand why. It was a reduced season, smaller budget, which they spent on explosions. <laughs> and uh, it was it was tough to get everybody back. I get that. But at least I got I got that little piece because, you know, as you know, on this channel, I'm a nerd and I, I, I look at those kinds of things. I also want to mention I'd be I'd be remiss to mention when Madison and Alicia and Tracy go back to Los Angeles, will they find Tobias? Remember Tobias, the kid from the high school. Will yeah. he still be That would be interesting. He'll be the one guy in Los the, Angeles. The one that survived. That survived it, yes. Yeah, I uh, know. Last thing, and this is just me being picky, but why did they never mention Chris? The stepbrother? Yes. It, it, they don't even mention her ex-husband by name. It's Travis, by the way, but he couldn't even get his name mentioned. Well, you know. And, and no love for Chris. Chris, no Chris, Chris, mm, Chris was not. <laughs> I would rather not speak on Chris. We might have to have an episode of nothing but Chris, Chris, and more. Yeah, Chris. no, I, you know, I, Chris was more annoying than um, Alicia and Nick, in my opinion. Combined? Yes. Okay. All right. Yeah, he. Um, but but you know, truthfully. And I didn't put it together, or you know, I didn't. Hadn't, it was you would not be able to make that correlation. But again, Henry, that's who I'm gonna, you know, he because you know he didn't want to listen to his dad, and you know he was this rebellious teenager who was a big brat, and you know he knew everything, and that's all I'm gonna say. Ah, I see. I fired you up there with that one, bringing it back, kicking yeah. it old school. All right. Well, that concludes eight seasons of Fear of the Walking Dead. It had some highs. It had some lows. And it had just some, oh, it was okay to watch on a Sunday night. But I'd say overall, for eight years, we enjoyed watching it as a whole. We'll miss it because, well, there's one less thing on Sunday nights we had to look forward to, to watching. I guess we'll get to watch more uh, Sunday night football. Is that what I hear you saying? If that's what you want to watch, honey, that's fine by me. And this is recorded online forever, people. Posterity and permission at the same time. All right. Well, on behalf of Lady Cephas, I am the Lord Cephas. If you're still with us, we ask you to just click the like button. Subscribe if you've not done so. Turn that gray button. And uh, make sure you get all notifications. We have tons of stuff to go up every single day. And then share this out on your social media platform of choice. And with that, Lady Cephas, do you have anything else? I do. I just want to say thank you for going on this journey with us. It has 
been so much fun to do this with you. Mm -hmm. And I look forward to doing it again with other Walking Dead spinoffs. Well, now the actor strike is over. Yeah, maybe we can start shooting Back some to things. Business. We might actually have a Daryl Dixon season two somewhere in twenty twenty nine. Oh, so spoiler, spoiler. Hey, hold on, spoilers. Go ahead. So the they changed the well they so they came out with the subtitle of season two. Um. For Daryl Dixon. Is it Carol Kills Kids? No. Dang it. It's the Book of Carol. I, I believe that's, if I remember correctly, it's called the Book of Carol. I can't wait. I can't wait. Is is that like the Book of Boba Fett? Because I can wait if that's but, the case. I would have to, I saw it and I try not to look at, at spoilers. Right. You know, but... um. All right, I'm checking this out. The Book of Carol. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it's ooh, being teased as the ooh. Book of Carol. There's, yeah. No, I saw a, a thing. Um, oh, the promo teases the Book of Carol. Right, but that's what they're the, now taught. See, it's now titled. Um, Journey to Reunion. What? Yeah. Uh, yeah, see, it's now titled The Walking Dead, Daryl Dixon, Dixon, The, the Book, Book of Carol. Carol. Yeah. Check. <sighs> I love it. I'm so excited. <sighs> okay, well, you know, lock your children away. Keep them safe. Carol's on loose again. Ah. Uh, All right. Well, we it sounds like we got a bunch more to keep track of and talk about as we go through. Well, thank you so much, as she said, for coming on this journey with us, for supporting us. We appreciate your comments. We appreciate your critiques. We appreciate all of your feedback. So we would say, take care, everybody. Enjoy the episodes we did. Hey, maybe go back and watch some of your favorite ones and remind yourself why you stuck it out yeah. through eight years because that's what we've done in the past. And so with that, I'm the Lord Cephas. She is young lady Cephas. We will see everybody next time.